The French were no strangers to romance and sexiness, but there was a wild edge to the romance of Galliano's vision, a sense of things spinning ever so slightly out of control. It added a spice of danger to the slightly stale French fashion stew. Nothing else seems to think about pushing things in the way you push them. It's that delight thing. Delight in that? Yeah, I love... Take a perverse delight in that? Not perverse. <laughs> no, it's just really important to the collection. It's that thing, that the backdrop to the collection. It's really important that you live it, you breathe it, you smell it almost. You can hear the fabric moving. For me, it was just the best way of showing my fashions. I just thought, you know, that was the best way for me to show my clothes. The fashion moment is one of the great history cliches. Jean Galliano has been responsible for more than his share. But even so, his show in March 1994 had a special resonance. Harsh financial realities made it an exercise in ingenuity. But the blood, sweat and tears weren't in evidence. Instead, we saw breathtaking sophistication or inspiring confidence, naked sex appeal. It was a professional turning point for Galliano, and it all happened here. Sal gave a wonderful party for Holston. Here at this house, I remember coming in, it was so glamorous. And it's as glamorous today. Mm. And what about Mr. Galliano? How do you... Uh, oh, how do you... He's wonderful. So wonderful. I think that this is probably, with everything happening in Paris, which is the center of all great fashion, uh, that everyone is the most interested in this show. This is the most sought-after ticket in the count, you know? I think he's very special. He's himself. He doesn't copy from others, although he's very inspired by Vionne, but that's the great cut. I wanted to go back just for a minute and ask you about that, the collection you showed in Sal Schlumberger's house in the fall 1994, because it seems to me that was a real turning point for you. Um, would you agree with that? Yeah, it was. It was, well, it was, uh, I was with Anna. <laughs> it was a team effort of Amanda Hollick, myself, John Galliano and Stephen Robinson. Three weeks before um, the French collections were due to be shown, and um, I, did, I, I hadn't planned on doing anything or showing anything because I didn't have the money, didn't have whatever. His back had pulled out. Um, Anna went to, she kept saying to me on the telephone, please make sure that John has a show in March because if he skips one season, it's going to be very detrimental to his career. And Anna had said, you just mustn't, you can't miss another season. You know, what are we going to do about it kind of thing. And so she said, just go and do whatever you have to do to make sure he has a show, even if it's, you know, 15 pieces, 18 pieces or whatever. And um, before I knew it, there was an appointment made with Serge Schlumberger. And so we took her to lunch. Andre took us. I was there. The three of us went to lunch. And we said, Sal, this is not a free lunch. And she says, there's no such thing as a free lunch. What do you want? And then they had cooked up this idea that maybe, you know, Sal had a building where I could maybe show. And I said, Sal, we want to show John's show in your house on Rue Ferru. And she was game for it. She went, yeah, sure. Yes. We had a venue, but we had no designs, no, no fabric, no nothing. And then I managed to get hold of a lot of um, um, this black viscose satin back crepe, which I loved working with. And I knew how it reacted on the bias. And we fitted it all individually on each girl. And it was amazing. Those girls got to me at 5.30 in the morning, 6 o'clock. I mean, to do that show, it was like, I was pretty impressed. And they all did, they, they weren't being paid for those shows, were they? They were doing them out of love. Yeah. We pay them now, though. <laughs> From the start, the cohesiveness of Galliano's shows gave them an irresistible edge. Everything from the invitation, the location, and the set design, through to hair and makeup, played a part in building an atmosphere and telling a story. At that time when I was doing that kind of presentation close up where you could see the girl really close, um, it just felt right to do that kind of thing because, I, I, you know, those dresses needed space. You needed to see them in a certain context which was kind of getting lost on the runway, I think. Um, it's all a pleasure, perhaps, that people had forgotten to enjoy. Um, you know, hearing the rustle of a taffeta, being able to smell the perfume on the girl. 
In its celebration of the sophistication of haute couture's golden age, especially Dior's new look, Galliano's show at Studio Pinup was a prophetic glimpse of things to come. Madonna's attendance also made it absolutely clear that Galliano was the hottest ticket in town, a situation which his next two shows did nothing to change. Think of a smash Broadway show that sold tickets for one night only. You can imagine how privileged the few who got those tickets felt. I think it's fabulous. I think, first of all, you know, it that kind of brings back the excitement of what fashion was in the way that things didn't look, you know, so commercial. I mean, it was, there was more adventure into fashion than now. The Broadway show analogy isn't mere whimsy. The theatrical nature of Galliano's presentations was intensifying. And against these fantasy settings, the clothes were becoming more and more theatrical, too. His signature piece, the bias-cut dress, loaned itself to radical reinterpretations of the modern woman's wardrobe. And that entirely modern material girl, Madonna, seemed to have become something of a Galliano groupie. By the mid-90s, minimalism had asserted itself as a dominant mode of the decade. Galliano's riotous extravagance was 70mm Technicolor in a small screen black and white world. It would have been a wonder if it hadn't attracted attention. And even though finances were tight, the glory reflected well. All sorts of people wanted to get involved. Close up, extreme close up. It was all about teamwork, and Team Galliano had some of the best names in the business. Well, we work together for a long time and we have a very good vibe, you know, and he has a good knowledge of music, so I find it very easy to work with him. His enthusiasm is unparalleled, and, um, and that infects, I think, all the team that works with him. He has still, I'm sure, a really good team around him, so that there were these intense, epiphanic times when people would brainstorm all together, and John's fabled way was extraordinary. It was great to work with that. But the team players the world wanted to hear most about were the supermodels. They loved John, famously doing his shows for free when he couldn't afford to pay them. He treats models the way no one else does, kind of, you know. He treats you really well and he's always, always got this big smile on his face and it just feels good to work for him, you know. I love working for John because John always gives you a story he always gives you like a fairy tale and we really get to perform for this show i love doing them i think it's it's so refreshing because when you just do shows that are always on the same runway with the same lighting same music you know on all the different runways it gets a little boring it's really nice to have some kind of inspiration and his biggest cheerleader was naomi campbell the little girl from the same part of south london as john he had a vision and he could explain you that vision and you could see it and you just got excited by just hearing him speak it. And then to turn around and see the clothes, it was just like a dream. For me, John was just like a big dream theatre production, like just unimaginable, but he made it all come true. And it's just, you know, it's, been, it's oh, so exciting, so exciting. I used to get so nervous doing Galliana shows and... Um, Oh, he's a great guy. I love John. I think since I was 16, and I just, you know, a very, very special man. There ain't no free lunches in the fashion industry. So what exactly was it about Galliano's vision that could enrapture his collaborators to the point where they'd forego their all-important fee? When you had that much creativity and that much passion, that much joy, I mean, we're just so lucky. Passion is a very persuasive force. Galliano was always passionate, but there was also always this other driving force, the quest for perfection. How seductive that must have seemed to his band of collaborators, and how elusive. Yeah, it was difficult. What kept you afloat? Just the love of what I was doing. I mean, I can't imagine myself doing anything else. And I love what I'm doing. I can't imagine doing anything else, so that, that really is what kept me going, I think. I just loved doing it. <clears throat> Even if it meant, like, <clears throat> excuse me, 
you know, pattern dresses out of toile or whatever. As long as I was doing, I was involved in that creative process, I was happy. Mm -hmm.